Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Wilhelm Scream and welcome back to another day in Destiny 2 Shadow Keep for some more Destiny 2 news and Season of the Worthy Intel. And in this video, guys, I'm going to be showing you how anybody can get the most powerful heavy machine gun, possibly the most powerful heavy in the game currently. This discounts obviously the Air Apparent, which is new to the game. We don't know exactly how that will pan out in the future as far as the power structure revolving around that specific weapon. It does seem fairly strong, but today, no, we are going to be talking about the Xenophage, and as I said, how anybody can get this in under about a half hour from start to finish. I'm going to take you through all the steps regarding this exotic in just one second, but first, I just want to remind everybody I'm still doing the giveaway on my YouTube channel at 20,000 subscribers. All you have to do to be entered into that giveaway is like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, turn on the notifications, the bell, right next to the big red subscribe button and follow me on Instagram or Twitter. They'll be linked in the description box below. And as always guys, if you stick around to the end of the video, I'll have a secret hashtag you can leave in the comments section to be entered into that giveaway a second time for this video. And remember guys, the secret hashtag stack between all videos. So if you haven't done this on a previous piece of content on this channel, go back, check out another video, and of course, do it again. All right, on to the Xenophage. The first step is going to be going to the altar room where you find Eris Morn in front of the big black pyramid ship and entering this code into these four altars as I just did. This will give you the first part of this quest step, Emergence. This will require you to go back to the anchor line and light up a bunch of torches. Maybe you had seen this before, maybe you haven't, maybe you're new to the game and you haven't really been exploring the moon that much because you're a new light player or you're just picking it up from new light but there's a little orb in this one section this one little bunker on anchor line on the moon that will allow you to pick up this glowing orb and light i think it's six torches that will essentially give you the next part of that of this quest so we're gonna head over there right now and light up some torches it's kind of a fun little part of this quest i don't know reminds me a little bit of like old Zelda, if you ever played Ocarina of Time, something along those lines. This is going to be the stuff that's probably going to take the longest in terms of actually getting this exotic. And I have talked about getting this exotic many times before, but there's always new players to the game. And I get messages all the time, still, how do you get Xenophage? That is when I actually have the videos on my channel of how to get it, I still get the question. So I just want to reiterate some of these things once in a while. And this is still the easiest method. A lot of people thought that the glitch we're going to be using to actually get the Xenophage completed has been patched in the past, but it hasn't. It is still there. It is still the easiest method. And for what you get in this exotic, which really is the top one of two most powerful exotics and heavies in the game, it really is worth it. So as I said, we pick up this light. There's a little torch right there. You're going to follow just the path that I show you head up the hill. You do have to do this in order, so even though you see me maybe passing places where we'll have torches um, down the line here, uh, you have to do it in order. So follow exactly where I'm showing you. Go here, light this torch up, head over to your right, past the cliff, and down into this little bunker, and to your immediate right. Might be a little dark, just tucked right in there. Light that one up, there you go. This next one is a little bit of a hassle to find, and I think I kind of make a little bit of a derp jump. You want to try to make it right into that little hole, but I uh, missed that one. But no bother, just run around, head up to this second level here, scoot in, make your way to the other side, and right up on this little piece of scaffolding, boom, there's your next lamp. Next one's pretty easy. Move back across to where you just were. Head over on top of this little bunker. And you'll find the next one right here in the left corner. Next, move back across the map again. And up on top of this circular bunker, you'll find the next torch. Boom, like that. This is timed, but you do have about 50 seconds between each torch. And then move back over to this section and you'll have this checkpoint waiting for you. 
Once you deposit, you'll get the next part of this quest, Pathfinder. Now this will need you to go into all the lost sectors on the moon, complete them, and then enter a code in like a room, rune uh, tablet entry on each wall at the end of every lost sector. They're pretty easy to find, you can't miss it. This is the big wall of runes with a code and pattern on it. So now I'm just gonna show you, this is the code for every one of these rooms. And I could take you through all of them, but just know that you'll know where the lost sectors are. Just go into the lost sectors and you'll see these on the wall, enter these codes, you'll know what they mean. Take a screen cap of this or just pause the video right here once you get to this spot and make it all easier on yourself. Once you enter the code, you'll get that little checkpoint, which essentially gives you the journey. And this will require you to actually go into the Pit of Heresy dungeon to retrieve the Xenophage. Now you don't actually have to complete the Pit of Heresy dungeon. In fact, this exotic quest kind of runs parallel to it. You have to do certain parts of the raid, mainly the first section with the red towers and the second section with the ogres. It doesn't require you completing the ogre section, you simply just have to deal with them and complete a sub-quest that is available also in that room. There's also another little part of this sub-quest that takes place before that room in the doors room with all the hallways that shoot stuff out and knock you off the edge, kind of a pain, that you need to pick up, sort of like a little, um, it's another like little rune tablet that you have to go and scan before you actually enter the ogre room to get the final scan to pick up the orb that will allow you to get to the final room where you can defeat a boss that gets you the Xenophage. So you'll head down into the Pit of Heresy like so, but when you get to the bottom, you're not actually going to deal with anything in the Red Keep room. Instead, we are going to make our way to the right side of this particular room, the big cliff room as you enter, all the way on the opposite side of this map, where you'll see the lowest red keep with a rune symbol above it. It's gonna be important. It's always gonna be that specific one. It might get a little bit dark here. This is a fairly dark area as we run across. But essentially down to our left, you can see that one tower with the green rune floating above it. That's our spot that we're heading. We're gonna head there because behind this red keep this particular one, there is a slight separation between where the actual tower and the wall meet. We're going to use this separation to slide in between the red tower and the wall and get out of the map this way. Now this will be beneficial for many reasons. Mainly we can completely skip this whole section and we don't have to actually activate the portal to get to the next phase of this particular mission or quest. But also because in the next section where we would have a kill timer and ogres, neither one will spawn or be there for us to uh, choke on. So what this essentially allows you to do is get into the next phase of this mission, quest, dungeon, without having A, enemies to fight or B, a timer by which you can get killed and teleported back to the last section. So if you die at any single point from this point forward, after you slide through that crack that we just did, you will simply just spawn at the nearest checkpoint, but you'll be able to continue all your progress. That's gonna be really important once you get to the actual boss, because the boss for this exotic is probably the reason why people don't get it the most. Everything up until this point has been pretty easy so far if you know all the method. The last part is the boss and like I said, she can be a little bit tricky and the whole process by which you can actually do damage to the boss is also quite daunting. I've never really seen anybody be able to solo this, um, maybe some really good players, but it's a difficult solo regardless. Once you drop down that second crack, by the way, after you follow the pathing that I'm showing you, You'll make your way around the corner to this room with the big doors and up onto the ledge, second furthest to the left on the second floor. As I said, it can be a little dark here, so always have your uh, brightness turned up and you'll get this checkpoint, Discovery. 
At this point, you have to go into the ogre room. As you can see, there's no enemies, and we've gotten to this point without having to actually fight anything. Fairly quickly, I might add. You'll notice that in the next room, there won't be any ogre spawning, so you'll be able to just simply follow the point to the checkpoint and the quest tab for the next section to actually get the boss room. Now, once you're in the boss room, you will be able to essentially just die anytime you want to the boss, and you'll be able to continue to do damage to her in between deaths. Normally, once you die, you would have to restart the whole encounter. But using this method, you can simply just continue. If you do as much damage as you possibly can, and you die, you just spawn outside the room. Occasionally, you might actually spawn in this section of the pit, which is actually the part where you traverse down into the pit. Or you might spawn right at the beginning in this area that we're landing right now. But either way, the boss will retain all damage that you've already done to her, and you can simply just run back into the boss room. But at this point, once you've entered the pit, as you can see there's no ogres, simply make your way over to this left side, and you'll find this little rune tab on the floor. Stand it up, and you'll get these three floating towers that will appear in front of you. Any second now, there they are. Make your way to the final one, and pick up the next glowing orb. This will be the orb you use to actually light the final torches outside of the boss room. Be careful, because you don't want to have to repeat any of this. Make your way back to where you entered this section of the pit. I like to go this way. There are ways where you can cut in between to make this trip a little bit shorter, but it's just a run. So I like to go the sort of the most viewable path, which is just to go backtrack slightly, run around. This is sort of a big U shape. Both paths on this map, one goes left, one goes right, and there's several little ones that cut in between. But make your way down to this big door Light the torches and get the next step of this quest, which will require you to defeat the boss. It is a floating wizard of some kind, a little bit stronger than most, much stronger than most. The mechanics of this particular encounter are a little bit difficult. I'm going to try to explain them in the best way I can though it's a little bit confusing till you're actually in there doing it. But essentially, there is a glowing orb in the center of the room where the boss usually sits. You need to pick up this orb and you will get a designation for the orb. It'll say either Abyssal, Thunderous, Neutral, or Solar, or Sun of some, some designation saying that it's one of the three subclasses. Basically what this means is the designation will tell you what you can actually do damage to the boss with. If it's neutral, you can only use kinetic weapons. If it's thunderous, you can only use arc. If it's solar, you can always use only use solar. And if it's abyssal, you can only use void. You pick up the ball and run to one of the runes in the four corners of this room uh, corresponding with that particular subclass or, or, or type of damage. Neutral is to your immediate right as you enter. Thunderous is down on the first floor to your left. Abyssal is on the second floor in the back left. And um, Sun or Solar is in the bottom right corner. So you pick up the ball and you run to one of these four points based on what the game is designating for you. Once you've Put, place the ball in the room or the orb in the in the rune you'll be then able to do damage with that specific type of weapon or subclass to the boss now here's a big tip when you're in this room just to make it a little bit faster you can pick the ball up from underneath the platform which makes things a lot easier because you don't run the risk of getting shot by the boss quite so much but once you've kind of gotten the pathing done, and remember you can die in this room, normally you would have to worry about actually dying because then you'd have to start this whole thing over again. You will get the final step, the finality, which then requires you just to return to Eris Morn on the moon 
and you can pick up your Xenophage. As an added bonus, there is a secret chest beneath this room. It has a couple of things you might want, some interesting items. I think it has a quest item you can pick up from it, but I also get questions about how you can actually get to that chest. It's pretty easy. All you have to do is just run out of this room and right across the hallway, you'll see this little whatever that is, break through that, move through this tunnel slightly and just sort of hug the right wall as you enter. You'll see it kind of cuts around to the right again and up on top you'll see this little tunnel. You have to sort of jump up and down and just follow it to its end. Again, having your brightness turned all the way up really helps. Make your way into this room and there's the chest. So, as I said, that's going to make everything much easier when defeating this boss, simply because you can just take your time. It's just a battle of attrition at that point. You don't have to really be very good. You don't have to worry about timing because if you die, you'll just spawn outside the room and you can continue. The toughest thing is probably going to be getting in there and just figuring out where everything is as far as the rune deposits are, so you know where to go for um, every single designation. But use the under the platform ball glitch. That'll really help you out just because you can stay in cover a lot longer and, uh, you know, maybe limit the amount of times you have to die and run back. But most of the time you will spawn right outside the room. As I said, occasionally you might spawn in the top tunnels as you enter the pit. Only happens to me every once in a while, but um, doesn't really matter. Just a little bit of a longer run. You just have to run back in and uh, get that final, um, the door will be open and just get that final few hits on the boss. Most of the time you'll spawn just right outside the room and occasionally you might spawn right in the first part of the tunnels of the ogre room. So hopefully this information helped you guys get your xenophage. It's really great exotic. Everybody should have a chance to get it. I know when I first did this mission or quest, excuse me, uh, doing it on my own was almost impossible. Um, it was impossible. I finally had to just get a buddy to stand outside the room so I could just use him as like a spawn point so I didn't have to keep wiping. That was after several hours of attempting it solo and just having no success. And most people will probably only be able to do this with a buddy or maybe even with three people this is optimal. And some people just can't get enough people together often enough to go and do this. I would say the Xenophage is sort of on par with the um, Outbreak uh, Perfected or Prime as far as uh, quest difficulty. So thank you all so much for watching today. And for today's secret hashtag, you can leave in the comments section, leave a hashtag Season of the Worthy or a hashtag Xenophage or... Um, any other hashtag that you guys can think up that might be um, relevant to this particular video. And we're so close to 20,000 subscribers, we might actually hit 20,000 subscribers on this video before I post another one, that is. So make sure you get in as many times as you can on that giveaway. Um, and thank you all so much for all the support on the YouTube channel. It's amazing that we've actually come to this point. Uh, I doesn't go unnoticed how great this community really is and thank you all for sticking by me for those of you who have for as long as you have as always i'm wilhelm scream we will see you next time little